In this problem, a student releases a system on an incline as shown. The coefficient of static friction between the 24 kilogram box and the surface is 0 0.25, and the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0 0.12. Let's start off by drawing our forces on each of the highlighted objects. So on this hanging mass, we're going to have a weight down and a tension acting upwards. And on our mass on the incline, we have a weight down, a normal force diagonally up to the right, and a tension diagonally up to the left. Since this mass is on an incline, we want to rotate our axis right there, and we want to draw components on our weight. So for our weight, we're going to have a normal weight component and a downhill weight component. Let's also go ahead and write down for our system, we'll need net force, mass, and acceleration. Alright, let's start labeling some forces that we know. Using g equals 10 meters per second squared, we know that the weight of our 20 kilogram mass is 200 newtons, and the weight of our 24 kilogram mass is 240 newtons. Alright, my 34 degree angle right here would fit right there on my weight triangle, making the actual weight the hypotenuse, the normal weight component the adjacent side, the opposite weight component, or the downhill weight component, the opposite side. All right, I'm going to not show my trigonometry, but my, I know that adjacent equals hypotenuse times cosine of the angle, so 240 cosine 34 degrees gives me 199 newtons as my normal weight component. And my downhill weight component would be 240 sine 34, which gives me 134 newtons feel good about those answers because since this is less than a 45 degree angle more weight would be pulling into the hill than down the hill. Alright, since I have so many forces I want to kind of cross out things as I go. My weight was resolved into these two components so I don't need to worry about that 240 newtons anymore. Alright, I know my, my normal force will balance my normal weight component making this 199 newtons here. These two forces balance. My tensions are internal forces, so if I look at the entire system, I know these are equal and opposite. I put an I on those to stand for internal, and to remind myself I don't really need them anymore. I haven't drawn friction yet because I don't know what direction it's acting in. But I know that I'm left with the weight of my hanging mass and the downhill weight component of my box that is on the incline. Alright, so these are the two forces I care about, and this tells me that even though 24 kilograms is more than 20 kilograms, when I just look at the forces that don't balance out, it's this 200 newtons that's larger than this 134 newtons, and so my system is trying to go this way. My pulley is trying to spin counterclockwise, which means my box is trying to go up the hill. I don't know if it will yet, but I know it's trying to go up the hill, and that means that my friction is going to be down the hill. Keep in mind, in your problem, the numbers could be different. If my downhill weight component had been larger, then this box would be trying to slide down the hill and dragging this thing up. So just make sure you know that it could be written either way. All right, now it's time for me to figure out uh, some stuff about my friction. It's always a good habit to write down static and kinetic and label your coefficients of friction. I know that the static coefficient of friction is 0 0.25 and the kinetic coefficient is 0 0.12. Multiplying those but both by the normal force, I know that the maximum static friction equals 0 0.25 times 199 which is 49.8 
newtons and my kinetic friction which I may or may not need would be 199 times 0.12 which would give me 23.9 newtons alright so the question you always want to ask yourself is is the static friction strong enough to keep this system at rest alright I have 200 pulling in one direction trying to make my system spin, trying to make my pulley spin counterclockwise and 134 pulling in the opposite direction that's a difference of 134 I'm sorry that's a difference of 66 which means my static friction is not strong enough my static friction can only be as high as 49.8 which means the system's going to slide let's go ahead and answer some questions on the left it says what is the maximum static friction between the block and the surface in this situation well it is 49.8 newtons which is not strong enough to balance out this difference here be careful you're in your problem it could be so what direction is the backwards friction on the 24 kilogram block that would be down to the right what direction will the 24 kilogram block slide well in this case it will slide and it will slide up to the left again in your problem it could be different it could not slide or it could slide in the opposite direction the magnitude of the backwards friction. Well, my box is sliding, and since my box is sliding, we automatically know that my friction equals the kinetic friction. So 23.9 newtons. I can put that on my free by diagram and in as my answer. And what is the magnitude of the net force on the system? All right. Well, friction is another force that didn't cancel out, so I'm going to highlight that. To get my net force, I'm going to look at what's trying to make my object spin one way which is 200 newtons I'm going to subtract off 134 newtons from the downhill weight component and I'm going to subtract off the friction alright so 200 minus 134 gave me 66 and subtract off another 23.9 and we're at 42.1 newtons for the net force on the system. The mass of the system, again, I have to look at the whole system first. The mass of the system is 44 kilograms. I just added 20 plus 24. Then I know that acceleration equals net force divided by mass, Newton's second law. That gives me 42.1 divided by 44, which gives me 0 0.957 make sure you keep three sig figs with this program meters per second squared alright so we have one more question and that is what is the tension in the string whenever we are looking at a trying to find an internal force we need to if we look at the whole system, then those internal forces balance out. So I'm going to focus in on one object. Always the best idea to focus in on the simpler object. So my simpler object in this case is right here. So I'm just going to look at this part of the problem. I'm actually going to redraw it below. So if we scroll down, I say, OK, I have this box. In my problem, this box is moving downwards. Let's color green for consistency. And I have weight downwards and a tension upwards. And I'm going to write Newton's second law, net force, mass, and acceleration. My given here are that my acceleration is 0 0.957 meters per second squared. The objects are tied together. That's both of their accelerations. The mass of the object was 20 kilograms, which meant the weight was 200 newtons. All right. So I can just use net force equals mass times acceleration. 
and get that the net force on this individual object was 19.1 newtons. My box is moving downward with an increasing speed, which means that my weight had to be greater than my tension. The difference between those was 19.1. So I'm going to do 200 minus 19.1, and that'll give me 180.9 or 181 newtons as my tension in the string. A good way to check your answer would be to put 181 newtons right here, find the net force, and see if you get the same acceleration. All right, let's take a look at one more challenge problem. In this problem, a student wants to determine the range of masses that can be hung to keep a block at rest on the table as shown. The coefficient of static friction between the 30 kilogram box and the surface is 0 0.33, and the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0 0.21. Let's start by drawing some forces. So we're going to have weight and tension on this box, weight, normal force, and two tensions and a friction, but we'll come back to that on the middle box and on the other hanging box, just a tension up and a weight downwards. Labeling all the forces I can, I know this weight is 300 newtons. This normal force is 300 newtons. On the right, this box is 170 newtons. And that is all that I know at this point. All right, so let's look at the first problem. The first problem says, what is the smallest mass M that will keep the system at rest? All right, so the way I like to think about this one is if this box is small, then that means my system is going to try to move in this direction. If this box, if the box on the left is smaller than the one on the right, then the box on the right is going to try to go downwards, the box on the left is going to try to go upwards. And if this box in the middle, that would make it try to go to the left, which means in the case where this is the smallest, I would have a friction to the left. Let's go ahead and write down. Well, in this case, I'm, not, I'm just going to write down static. Because this problem says, what's the smallest mass that will keep the system at rest? And the next question will also ask me to keep the system at rest. So I only care about static friction. The 0.21 here, that's extra information. So the coefficient of static friction is 0 0.33. And that makes my maximum static friction 300 times 0.33, which gives me 99 newtons. So in the case where this is as small as possible, then I'm going to have a friction to the left. And in the limiting case, that friction is going to be 99 newtons. Let me cross out a lot of forces. I know that my tensions will all cancel if I look at the whole system because they're internal. This weight and this normal force will balance. So the forces that I care about are this weight this friction, and this weight over here. So I want my forces to balance. And if I want my forces to balance, I know that this 99 is going to be working with this weight. So doing 170 minus 99 I get 71 newtons right here. So under the case where this is the smallest mass possible, if this were any smaller, then a 99 newton friction couldn't hold it. If this were a little bit larger, if this weight were 100, then this friction would only have to be, would automatically adjust to be 70 and would hold it still. Because as long as I can hold this, this system still with a friction of 99 or left, I'm good to go. Nothing will move. All right, so 
The smallest mass, so I take this 71 divided by 10, is 7.1 kilograms. In that case, the strength of the friction is 99. And in that case, the friction was to the left. So a maximum friction to the left gives us the smallest mass that will hold us still. Similarly, let's take a look at our next problem. So for the next part, let me erase my answers there and my work as well as this friction and these little arrows right here. So to get my, if I make this weight on the left side larger, as large as possible, that'll make my system want to move in the opposite direction. It'll make the pulleys want to spin counterclockwise. In that case, my box at the top is trying to move to the left and needs a friction to the right. Again, we're trying to find the limiting case, so our friction would be 99 newtons. This time, let's highlight that as well. This time, this friction is working with the 170. So I can have a weight as high as 170 plus 99, which gives me 269 newtons. If the friction was any higher, I'm sorry, if this weight was any higher, the friction couldn't hold it still. If this weight was a little bit lower, that's fine, because then this 99 would just reduce a little bit, because remember the static friction is just trying to hold the object still. All right, so my largest mass that holds us still is 269 divided by 10 to get me back into kilograms, or 26.9 kilograms. In this case, the friction again is the maximum static friction of 99 newtons, and we figured that out by applying a friction to the right.